Hi, my name's Kevin Aronson from Hampshire School of Photography. And we continue in our weekly tutorials looking at Photoshop and Lightroom and a little bit of photography. This is part two of a session we're doing on Lightroom and its search facilities. So maybe not as sexy as some of the subjects, but incredibly useful. We're looking at the same 20 photographs that we had in Lightroom during the last session when we were filtering on text. Today we're filtering on attributes. And in order to filter, um, I thought I'd better tell you this one because I didn't tell you on the first session. If you're in the grid view like this and you want to bring up, or you can't see your filter bar across the top, if you hit the backspace key like this, it drops it down. So the backspace key in the grid view hides or unhides the filter bar. If you hit the backspace key when you're in the develop module, uh, it does something else. It shows you before and after your edit. But here we go. So we have we did text last time. This time we're on attributes. And attributes are this lot. The, all these things here. Now some of you may already be using these. And some of you may not have even noticed them before. Especially if you had your uh, Lightroom set like this. And you didn't even realise there was an attribute bar there. You may have seen these down here. But not quite figured out how that applies. So you, you can click on an image down here. Let's just click on this picture here, this weir, and then I can allocate it uh, a star rating, so like that. So now you see five stars are just on the bottom of that image. I can reduce that to two star if I think it's not as good as I thought. <laughs> I could mark it for selection by clicking on here, the white flag, and the white flag appears here. Now I, I tend not to move my mouse around and click on this stuff all the time I, I just hit P for pick and when I hit P for pick if I undo it for a second if I hit P for pick watch P here we go there it is if I want to unpick it I press U for unpick so P for pick U for unpick if I want to mark it for deletion like these ones I hit X and now it's marked for well, they call it marked as rejected or marking of a deletion they're not deleted until you actually delete them using your backspace or delete button. Okay, so I actually don't want to delete that one, so I'm going to keep that one. Um, I hit U then for undo or unselect, unpick. Okay, so let's go back to the backspace key, bring down the uh, filter bar. And you can see here, first of all, we've got three, three flags. We've got the white and no color, it's kind of a gray and then black. If I click on the white one, it will show me all the images which have been marked as pics. So all these images had little flags on them. If I close that down, you can see that one there had a pic, this one, this one, and here. So that's five that I can see. Let's do that again. There we go, there's the five. So I'm very easily and very quickly filtering out the images that I've picked for selection. If I click on this one, which is kind of grey, nothing, this will select all the images I've not selected. There we go. No picks, no deletions there either, because the deletions are on this one. If you click this one, it shows up all the images you've marked for deletion. I can combine them if I want. I can have all my unpicks as well as my deletions or I could have this un undo the deletions one I can have all my unpicks and all my picks so here I've got all my picks with the flags and all the ones which haven't got any kind of attribute in terms of a flag against them whatsoever so I can mix and match if we come up to this section now we've got two things here called edits if you click on the first one it shows you all the images that you've actually edited this one shows you all the images that you haven't edited so let me just get rid of both of those for a second so the second one if i click on that on its own i had both clicked together so it may have confused you if i just click on the second one it shows you the only image in this group which hasn't had any ed edits done to it not entirely true because i can see that this was edited in photoshop because of the words here edit edit but i've not edited the image since it arrived back in lightroom after the Photoshop edit. <laughs> Guys, this get confusing. 
So you can edit it in Photoshop, you can edit it in Lightroom. The system only detects edits in Lightroom, which I guess makes sense. So again, click on the first one to filter out so you can only see all the shots you've done some editing to. And then deselect it. And then click on the other one to show all the shots you've not done any editing in Lightroom to. Good. Oh, that was complicated. The next section is stars. So I've got a two star rating there. If I click on here, it shows me all those with two star ratings. Now let's just go through them and just let's just give them a few stars. So I'm going to click on that one with a five on my keyboard to give it a five star. I'm going to give that one a four star. I'm going to give that one a four star. I'm going to give that one a two star. That one a two star that one a one star and so on you get the idea and then a couple of five stars we do that as five we do that as five okay so you can see there's a mixture so as we go through them any one stars ah so you need to be aware of this this little drop down here shows you where the rating is greater or equal to so when i click on one star there it shows me one star or above basically just about everything which has got a star rating against it if i selected equal to it only shows me then the images with a single star yeah so where the rating is less or equal to it should be the same uh, where the rating is less than equal to one. oh of course yes there are some here with no ratings at all no stars so it's shown those as well or where the rating is greater than or equal to. So it's showing me one stars, two stars, three stars, four, and so on, because it's greater than. If I pick uh, a two star, it will show me here two star or greater than two star. This one will be two star or less than two star, or none at all, and so on. So you get the idea, you can filter out according to the stars and whether, you know, this is self-explanatory. Either way, being able to filter out using star ratings is extremely helpful, and I do this all the time, all the time. Um, as I do the colors, which is the last section, so I'm just gonna remove all the filters again, and hit backspace so I can see. Didn't need to do that, did I? No, I didn't. Colors, okay, let's, as you can see here, these two have got red, tags allocated to you get a little red down the bottom and they're, they're framed in red and the, these have got yellow if i want to add a blue one let's just click on that and i'll add a blue by clicking on here and now this is a blue one uh, and when you're not clicked on it you can see the whole thing is in blue so this means now that i can filter according to the color reds only uh clicked on it again to deselect that yellows only click on yellow again to deselect it and blues only I could select red and blue <laughs> or all the colored ones <laughs> does that make sense <laughs> oh so there you go in attributes you can sort by flags you can sort by whether they've been edited or not you can sort by stars or you can sort by color one final little goodie up here um, this one the, these little three icons here rarely used but quite useful the first one selects ordinary original images the second one selects virtual copies and you can tell they're virtual copies because they've got little like curled up corners as if they were sheets of paper or something twist kind of curled up and the last one which doesn't apply to me at all, it's for video. There's no video in here whatsoever. So virtual, real images, blah, blah, blah. There we go. And don't forget, you've got all these options here as well. Thanks for listening. See you next week for the last part in the series. Let's be honest. You are probably a creative genius. <laughs> I know I am. <clears throat> so what I'm getting at here is that creative geniuses like the creative bits of Lightroom and Photoshop 
but they get a bit bored with the the stuff in the background, like searching, cataloging. It's it's not interesting. I understand it completely. Understand it. I'm with you. I'm completely with you. But has to be done. It will speed up your workflow and give you sanity. So. Thanks for watching this one. Stay next week for the next one, which I think is probably the sexier of the three, because this is number two of three. Third one's really good, I think. Um, I forgot what I was going to say now. Yeah, but if you want to learn face-to-face, -face, if you want to meet me and come to my training centre, which is in Fleet in North Hampshire, brackets, southern coast of England, close brackets, then check out the website gohsp.com go hsp go hampshire school of photography get it hsp.com and uh, all the courses are listed on there so that's courses for beginners right the way through to those who want to go professional everybody in between one day courses courses over a few weeks and courses over the course of a year how exciting is that thanks for watching see you next week have a great day bye